persistence. The only key to killing big bucks is persistence. It seems like everyone wants to go out in the field and plant food plots and all that. You don't need all that. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little story about how I was persistent and ended up killing a 142 inch 12 point buck in eighth grade and in fifth grade killing 150 inch almost Booney Crockett eight point. Just a huge deer. Alrighty, it's pretty cold out here, so sorry if I'm sniffling and freezing my ass off out here. But the story, the not story, but the lesson I want you guys to take away from this video is that persistence pays off. And no matter what you do, it's just, it's what I've learned. That you need to be persistent at something that you love to be successful. So here is my story on how I was persistent and successful. All right, so I've killed big deer all my life, ever since I started hunting, all right? I'll pop some pictures up on the screen and I'll show you guys those pictures of those deer that I killed. Now that you guys have seen those pictures, the first deer that popped up is the one that I killed this year, 2020, uh, late muzzleloader season. I'll get into the story in a minute. And the second deer is the one, actually my first buck, 150 inch eight point. So I've pretty much killed big deer all my life. I've been hunting since, since I can remember, to be honest, since I, well, I remember my dad not letting me go hunting and because I was too little, but I still wanted to go. I had that drive to just go out there and do big things, go hunting, kill big bucks, all that. So, and the third deer is the, my second buck, my second buck in Kentucky on this awesome farm. So the side, that buck didn't really take much. It was just a really good place to hunt. So that's how I killed it. Okay, so it's freezing out here. Gotta get this done quick. So the the first buck, the one that I killed this year, that really taught me persistence. The only key to killing big bucks is persistence. It seems like everyone wants to go out in the field and plant food plots and all that. You don't need all that. You you need, you just need to find some public land. Find some acorns and sit on the acorns. That's all. It's it's not as complicated as everyone's making it. And, and some people say that I have good land to hunt on. I do my scouting. Every land has big bucks. There's no question about it. And that is another thing that I want you guys to take away from this. There are big bucks everywhere. It's only a matter of how many hours you put into the stand. How many times you go and sit. Till you kill that buck. All right, so the first, well, um, this is the story I want to tell you guys is that first deer, 142 inch, 12 point buck. I took it at 10 yards away with a muzzleloader, late season. Um, about a week into muzzleloader season, uh, I hunted probably. I probably sat 20 days in total during gun season, so almost the full gun season. I was out there every day, rain, snow, bad weather, wind, I was out there. And that's the thing, you need, you have to be out there to kill deer. You're not gonna kill deer from the couch. All right, so, so here's how the story goes. So a bunch of, it turns out this year, a bunch of people moved into our little public land. Uh, we were, me and my father were the only ones that hunted on it. And, uh, seems like a bunch of people moved in. There was new stands popping up everywhere. It just didn't, it wasn't right. There was, there's too many people. So that year I hunted, uh, opening day, saw nothing. And I was used to seeing nothing at all. So, uh, late muzzleloader season rolls around. I am out there 
as I would be hunting, trying to get a buck this year, not very confident. So it's one thing to think discouraging, but it's another thing to act discouraging. And I've learned that it's okay to think discouraged, but it's not okay to act discouraged. And that's the third thing that I want anyone who's watching this at home to take away from that. So, it was late season. I was sitting in my stand. I decided that sitting in my stand hasn't worked the whole year, so why keep doing it? So, I climbed out of the stand, started walking around, found some old rubs, old scrapes, all that old stuff. And I... So I popped over the hill, there were some turkeys uh, messing about, and I and I walked along this ridge. And at this point, I'm desperate. I'm here to kill a doe, a fawn, whatever, just to get some meat. Just to get some trigger action and some meat. Alright, so I spooked some does. I couldn't tell how many of them were, two or three. And so the next day, I'm out there, and I make my way down this ridge. It's morning make my way down this ridge, sit down on a log. And I'm sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. I know that there were deer here yesterday, and I know that it's took me all all season to find these deer, but I finally did. And we're in southern Indiana here. The deer aren't running around everywhere, but there's a bunch of deer here, good bucks and all that. So I'm sitting by this tree, and here piles out a bunch of does. So there's five or six does that keep piling out. I pull my muzzleloader up. I aim steady on one of the does and pull the trigger. I didn't feel confident about the shot. I felt like I rushed it. So I reloaded the gun, made my way down there, and was looking for blood. I didn't find any blood, none at all. Which is just a horrible feeling. You, you just sink. And it just, it's horrible when you miss a deer that you've been working all season for. And so, I'm looking for blood, looking for blood. Two hours has passed. I've gone up and down the ridge, just desperate, looking for white belly, looking for blood, anything. And so, I sit down where I think the deer, where I think I shot the deer at. I sit down. And I'm let I'm sitting there texting my dad saying, Dad, I didn't I didn't get it. That sucks. I didn't shoot it. I missed. And so I I'm and ba I'm not even lying when I say I was face first in the leaves. Just discouraged about this and all of that. Super discouraged. So I got up. Well, I heard something scurrying over in the bushes. I thought it was a squirrel. I was like, come on, I don't want to see a squirrel. Been seeing these guys all season. So I I looked up and the antlers bobbing through the trees. I see antlers coming towards me. I reach over, grab the gun, pull it, pull it back, get the muzzle loader. This this buck, ten yards from me. Ten freaking yards. I put it right on his shoulder and squeeze the trigger. It hits him. He tucks his tail and runs. And the it starts to get emotional after that. I'm I'm jumping up and down, batting my hands on the ground, crying, all that. It's awesome. Super awesome. And I ended up recovering this buck. And I learned that it takes persistence, and it's awesome deer hunting. It's just, it's get me fired up. I love it. So before I get too emotional in this video, thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, you might like my coyote hunting video from two days ago. So go check that out. And thank you for watching. But first, before we leave, I want to go over the things that you should learn from this video. You should learn that persistence pays. Okay? 
Persistence pays. All right. And you need to adapt and overcome to achieve your goals. That's a big one. That's a really big one. Because <laughs> you're never going to kill any deer without adapting. All right. Just plain and simple facts. And you need to be dedicated. Super dedicated. It's just, I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional, guys. It's just, this deer hunt stuff is firing me up. I want to get back out there. So, thank you guys for watching, and that's all.